What a week this has been. So many great things going on in the world of Nintendo and gaming in general, but I gotta say, my greatest highlight this week has been Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Guys, this game, do not listen. Do not listen to all the talk about uh, frame rate issues and resolution issues. This game looks fantastic. Let's talk about it a little bit. I played it last night, I picked it up, I've played it for uh, about two hours, got through, I would say, most of the bulk of the tutorial, did a few battles, got to uh, experience some of the quality of life changes in this game, and let me tell you, they did a great job, a great job with this game. In handheld mode, this game looks fantastic. It looks absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the best looking things you could honestly play on the Switch. It's just absolutely gorgeous. The graphics are beautiful. The detail is beautiful. It's buttery smooth. The story in this game... So the story of Xenoblade Chronicles, it starts off by showing these two massive titans, Mechonus and Bionis, two eternal gods locked in battle. Uh, they continue to fight for eons until... One kind of gets the better of the other, uh, Bionis cuts off Mechonis' left hand, and then both of their swords pierce each other at the same time, they end up frozen in between life and death, and over the course of time, th these things are so huge. The, the story is so cool because the entire story takes place on the backs of these two titans that are locked in eternal battle. Uh, you know, whole worlds grow up uh, on the body of these characters. And going back to this story after whatever it's been, 10, 12 years, to be able to play this in handheld mode, to be able to take it anywhere with me, just sit on the couch, flip it on, flip it off at will, it changes the dynamic of the game in such a way, you know, you can save at any point in this game, which is fantastic. That's one thing that I... I insist on with most games that I actually invest in is that I can save at any point because you know other than obviously you know story sections or whatever you can save pretty much whenever you want in this game and not only does that help you get through the game and you know I'm a, I'm a frequent saving kind of guy but uh, you know I don't necessarily like to be stuck playing a game for 45 minutes till I get to the next save point uh, you know I want to be able to control my playing experience, so being able to save at any point is a major win for me. Um, you know, there's a lot of extra features in this game, quality of life improvements and stuff. Um, it looks great, it plays great. I'm having so much fun with this game, it really seems to be optimized to play in handheld, which is fantastic. Uh, I started out a couple of weeks ago playing Dragon Quest Builders on my Switch Lite, and Although Dragon Quest Builders is a fantastic game, it's really not optimized for the handheld device. It, you know, the text is so tiny you can barely read it, and, uh, uh, you know, everything is just itty bitty on the screen, and, uh, you know, there's not a lot of detail and stuff. The way they've set up the camera angles, the way they've set up the text boxes and things like that, this really feels like it was meant to be on a portable device, and, uh, you know, it just, it absolutely looks stunning, and I can't say enough about it. My first thoughts, my first impressions, go buy this game. This game is not going to drop in price. This is one of these Nintendo Switch games that it's only going to go up like Fire Emblem or something. So go out and get yourself a copy, enjoy it now while you can, because I don't think it's ever going to be any cheaper. And it may end up being harder to find eventually. Moving on to something else here. I just, uh... Went to the mailbox, and uh, I had asked my son, you've seen him on the channel before, Kaz, I asked him to send me another box from the storage. He's kind of the keeper of all of my storage. When I moved out here, I only had to take what would fit in my vehicle, so I left a lot of my gaming stuff behind, and I've been having him mail me a box or so every week. I'm pretty sure this box has got my Sega Genesis in it, so, uh, hang tight here, I'm going to open it up and we'll have a look. Okay, so I definitely have my Genesis here. So, what do we got? Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Now, all of these games 
are loose right now, although I do have cases for most of them, but I stored the cases separately so that this would be smaller to ship. So the cases are in a different spot, but uh, this is all ready so that it would come out here and I would be able to play it. So what do we got here? Super Thunder Blade, oh yeah. Yeah, kind of Olympic gold sports cart, no big deal. Thunder Force 2. Taz, Escape from Mars. Subterranea, great game. Oh, the original Mortal Kombat. Well, here's a good one, Rocket Knight Adventures. Man, the amount of time I've spent playing this game. I absolutely love this game. Oh, a good old Altered Beast. Last couple here. Oh, Disney's Tailspin. I forgot I even had this one. Oh, and a good one, Donald Duck Quack Shot. All right, what else we got in here? Uh, oh, we got a six button controller. Big mess of wires here. Got a three button controller. Another three button controller. Got a third party six button controller with turbo. Oh, another game. Ah, yes, Disney's Aladdin. Some great stuff here. Got another three button controller. Power cord and RF cords here. And at last, my beautiful Model 1 Sega Genesis. I think I picked this up at a pawn shop for about 60, 60 or 65 bucks. It's in absolutely beautiful condition. And uh, all of these games work, or at least they did before uh, I put them in storage. So I'm going to hook them up and I'll let you know in another video. Thanks for sticking around, guys. Stay classy.